bring it down. <laughs> Take it down all the way. <laughs> hey there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are here. Welcome. My name is Sparks. I, myself, am a mean person. Hi, I'm Maddie, uh, the angry feminist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Parker. I'm that guy. You are that guy. <laughs> he is that guy. <laughs> it's like the it girl, you're that guy. <laughs> Yeah, pretty and much. Who's that guy? What? It's Parker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, welcome to the Culture, Language, and Art of the Worker podcast. We've been away for a while because, um, like, uh, there's like this whole virus going around. It's like a global pandemic. Yeah, and it's just been crazy. Um, so, and we are also like organizers. I'm involved in stuff that isn't just like talking about things. So, um, yeah. But uh, how have you been spending your little staycation, Parker? <laughs> um, uh, didn't do dick for pretty much close to the first month, and then. Um... I picked it up, um, doing some exercising, house projects. Now they're ripped. <laughs> um, I, I think I could take Singapore cane across the stomach right now. <laughs> <laughs> now you can't see it, but Parker is actually doing curls underneath the desk. He's. Yep. Uh, Constantly exercising. <laughs> 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 He's always um, working out. How do you feel better? Uh yeah. I mean, it's kind of like um, you know, besides like the usual wake up, everything that goes with waking up, letting dogs out, shit like that. Uh, <laughs> didn't have any like routine or something, so yeah, just like do that. Couple hours a day. Yeah. Couple hours a day. I was say that's a couple hours. Jesus. Well, you know, I'm Jesus. doing yoga and uh, working out and then stretching. So you know, all that um, and like taking, you know, breaks, taking my time. You know, that's a tough. Still, man. Good on you. Mm. <laughs> well done. You know, and, you know, also, I'm talking to my girlfriend when I'm doing this all the time, so, you know, <laughs> shit adds up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's only so many hours in the day to work out. <laughs> but you look good. If I could touch you without us dying, um, I would be all over From you. From a now. safe social distance? Yeah. I'd be like, like sticks. <laughs> Yeah, just I don't, uh, yeah, I don't get any six foot sticks. <laughs> <laughs> when I come across some, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, how have you been enjoying your staycation? Um, good. I mean, I've been, like Parker said, working out, which is helping. Y'all like, crazy. I don't know. It helps to have a routine because I, I feel like if I just do one thing, I only do like a half hour. But I feel like if I just do that and then I don't do anything else all day, I can still feel like I did something. So, I don't know. It makes me feel better. Yes, yes. Because we're, <laughs> we're so alienated uh, from our leisure. Um, That's true. That we always have to be doing something productive. I have a hard time. Well, at least it makes that. you feel good. Yeah. So, that's that goes yes. in the plus column. Um. You can feel good without making money for someone else or producing commodities or consuming commodities even. Um, although, if you'd like to donate to our Patreon, um, <laughs> you go right ahead. Um, that goes back into uh, buying weights for Parker <laughs> and anabolic steroids because... Uh, uh, to make the show better. Yeah. 
If if I I gotta present something. <laughs> <laughs> if 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 you get on at the hundred dollar level, the pay pig level on our Patreon, um, when it will buy Parker anabolic steroids and he will do every show shirtless from now on. <laughs> That's we'll basically pivot to like a live OnlyFans chatterbait type situation, <laughs> which will be fun. It will be a whole new progression for this show. We're gonna have to come up with a new, we're gonna have to come up with a new uh, acronym for the claw. Though. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will get on that this is not how i planned to um <laughs> begin this at all but um we are, we are we are getting off track here <laughs> yeah but but good um because i'm going yeah. to get into it a little bit um so maybe i'll do this in kind of two parts and then um we'll uh we'll go forward but in any case um so, well, just quickly, like, I'm back to work, and that's fun. Um, so, yeah. Um, yay. Yay me. Um, okay. So, as we, as we all know, electoralism is dead, right? Um, and that's not just because... Um, like representative democracy is like functionally flawed, um, but also because you can't make an economic choice anymore. You could have with Bernie Sanders. Um, he was the compromise yeah. candidate. Uh, you know, we we see um, an advantage in strategic alliances with social democrats like Bernie Sanders. Um, um, but like he he does not fit my politics. Like I'm not some sort of Sanders cultist. Um, I don't think any of us are. Um, this was well, about to that po- to that point. Um, I was actually just talking uh, with Meg about this not too long ago. Like <sighs> you know, um, I can't pull- I can't remember what brought it up. But it was about Bernie Sanders, and uh, I was like. He's such a traitor. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's one thing that drop out of the race because he was getting way behind Biden rapidly. Um, he had really no place to go from that point. So I get that. But to turn around and endorse him. He endorsed him before Warren did. Mm-hmm. Like, come bold. on. <laughs> well, I it mean. It was so quick. <laughs> right. And we all knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and I think. Um, in the heat of it all, given that there there is a level of excitement behind somebody who, like, I mean, we don't have to process this all right now, but, like, um, there, A, this was about material gains for working class people. This was about right. health care. Um, this was about um, under, like, non-reformist reforms to some extent. And things like abolishing ICE, um, yeah. even though, like, okay, so, like, that's a good step, um, but that's not that's abolishing not borders, yeah. which is, you know, what I would like. That's part of my platform. Now, um, so, this is about material gains um, for working class people, um, and it's especially important, which we're going to get into tonight, why, and kind of the history of how we got to this point um in a broad sense um but yeah no i mean like yeah no he is it's it's a letdown even though like he said he was gonna do it yeah i mean like we all knew he was going going to to happen but like didn't he wait weeks before endorsing hillary uh i mean i'm sure he did but and it's just like it was like a day or two later and he was like vote for this rapist guy my good friend the rapist yeah Yeah. i mean that's it and that's that's kind of the point is like you know i think you know the difference is it's like he um i don't know i could be the one reading into this but it seems to me like now he's like not talking about the system being the problem and he's like kind of just like putting it out there oh trump's the problem Mm -hmm. he just fell back in line yeah no no your original point was accurate well, that's going to be, um, I mean, that's the liberal worldview anyway. I mean, yeah. you know, 
that's that's the like democratic party worldview okay um and and it's especially disturbing given um not only like the current crisis but like if you've seen the biden ad um where it seems like their their strategy going forward is to like out um strong man donald trump like yeah. like joe biden's gonna be like oh Donald Trump says he's tough on China, but here's a picture of him like next to Xi Jinping. <laughs> you know, I I will really be tough in China, and I I will, I mean you know like whatever. But like I saw this coming. Um, if you remember during the debates, we talked about he had and they used it in his commercial where he's saying like you need to tell China we're going to be in your country. And, you mm-hmm. know, like you could say that's in a healthcare context or whatever. But like, can you imagine? Can you imagine? And- like anti-imperialism should be the basis of any good um, like progressive um uh, like that should be your foundational uh, yeah. politics towards liberation. Okay, and you know we can get into like that's if if you're just a progressive, right? You're a Democrat, but like you you don't think people should die because of lack of access to healthcare. You don't really have a material basis for your politics, but um, or maybe you do. But like that, the anti-imperialism I think brings a lot of people in, even like libertarians to some extent, um, because of different factors. It's it's that moral thing that that we like. That's a basic analysis, mm-hmm. um, and also kind of like it's not incorrect necessarily, but it's it's it's. it's it it substitutes something and that actually ties to something we're going to get into tonight but um it substitutes like material conditions um for like morality um, yeah, yeah, yeah. where even like objectively um like uh, there's a different <sighs> okay um imperialism in a moralistic context says that like it's bad to do these things because they're bad in with a, the right analysis should be or the real understanding should be not that like because it tends to like take the easy road in with nationalism it says that like you know america shouldn't be doing these things to um you know iraq let's say it, it 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 lacks the because it's bad um which yeah. it is but like but it lacks that context of this is um you know the ruling class of one country or multiple countries um uh, like a global ruling class in a lot of contexts mm-hmm. against really the poor and working class of one country or several countries or globally or whatever these are the thing like it it lacks like who's responsible yeah in a lot of cases and that is you know like anti-americanism is is lazy in that context because you you miss that class analysis and that's what's important and that's what the show is about especially so like if you're if 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 it, it is morally wrong but even if it wasn't like this is um class warfare on a global scale so yes it's wrong but like the why is important Mm. and it's not just because like it you have to know who's behind the wheel to some extent anyway before i like really get off on a totally (laughs) different tangent um let's talk about this um so in that realm of class analysis of things um one thing that really people don't like and um is when you talk about um well okay so even before that i'm scattered because i was on uh, a very long phone call and um hopefully there will be some good things going locally uh in this community going forward i'm very hopeful about it so i'm kind of jazzed in that <laughs> sense um So it's a good distractor. In any case, um, so let me hit the jiggle. (laughs) 
<laughs> How y'all do it tonight? <laughs> How's everybody feeling? You vibing? Vibe check. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay. So, what is neoliberalism in a broad sense? Um, it's um, we. How do we see it in the world? Okay, because it's used pretty broadly, and you know, I'm one of those people. I use it, but effectively, and it, it, it's a word that like um, has meaning and and needs to be confronted. Um, it's you know because I think people think you're talking about like liberalism and even that's used wrong yeah. in a lot of in a lot of contexts um like i remember when we were campaigning for bernie um i went up to this door and this woman was telling me how she was gonna vote for warren um and she was like you know what she was like well you know how we got trump right mm -hmm. and i was like yeah neoliberalism um and because she doesn't have a class analysis, because she was like a professional managerial class person, um, and has different class interests um, to some extent, um, and has different politics, largely. Um, yeah. The politics of virtuousness and, and morality, um, which is, yeah. Um, she was like, no, the Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's the only reason. Oh, it's missing such a big piece, and I tried really hard, but it just, you can't get them all. She so, was a tough person. Yeah, so if you're out there, Bernie won New Hampshire anyway, so we didn't need you. <laughs> Although, there are more of you than us, apparently, so, great. Although, not Warren. <laughs> yeah, not, not for Warren. But, but, but um, um, Democratic voters who have different interests mm -hmm. um, than material um, gains for working class people. Uh, because the Democratic Party is not the party of the working class. Um, there is no working class party. There's no party that supports, I mean, maybe like the Green Party or whatever. Um, um, but there's, between, in, in this, you know, dichotomy, in this two-party state, there's no representation for the material interests of working class people. Um, so that's the consensus. We see neoliberalism in the world as deregulation, um, as financialization of things, um, and as like the freeing up of markets. And I put that in big scare quotes um, because markets aren't free um, and whatever. Um, but that's how they present themselves. And what it is, is this global expansion of capital. And in some ways trying to like save and legitimize capitalism. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm correct when I say like Robert Reich is a neoliberal. Um, he literally has a movie called Saving Capitalism. Mm. Um, he's he's a revisionist in a lot of ways. Uh, maybe I'll go off on Robert Reich in the second half, but I, I <laughs> <laughs> because I don't like him. I mean, he has like a tenth of the analysis that he needs, um, and uh, he would be better off being quiet. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, the last time that labor really had power uh, in the 70s. So, so we have, before that a little bit, backing up, um, you have Nixon, okay, um, who I'm sure everybody knows Richard Nixon and some of the things he was doing. What happened was you had this age where, um, you know, throughout American history, for the most part, like people kind of believed the like mythos, right, of like, um, you know, America is good, and we do good things. The American dream. And well, yeah, that. But but I mean, like the the patina, the 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 mask. The, the what? The shine. Yeah. The shine <laughs> of yeah. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We uh, rock flag and eagle. Um, mm -hmm. We we believed that stuff. Um, yeah. And so then you have Vietnam, um, where we just like genocided 
you know, the third world. And, um, and you have, uh, like, uh, the Church Commission and the Pentagon Papers. And you have Nixon literally, like, doing B and E's and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we, we see, um, the, the, the mask slips off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there, there is pushback. There is, um, actual resistance movements. You have civil rights movements and all these sorts of things. Um, but we're forced to confront with the ugliness right it's it's laid bare um so and and we get into um you know you have like the yom kippur war and you have um oil crisis um essentially um and you have stagflation and we have jimmy carter um as president um and how he gets his his power his role in this, well, not his role, but his power in this is what he's talking about is um, like he he will embody virtue for you. Um, this is that kind of Obama um, feel, like yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I get that kind of vibe. Yeah. It's like, and we'll get into why that's bullshit, but like, (laughs) but he will embody virtue for you. He will make it, you'll feel good about your president. After all this ugliness, the ugliness of Vietnam and Nixon and, and, and all these things, um, you will feel good because this guy's going to be in the white house and he's going to be the, you know, kind hearted, a uh, virtuous person with his hands on the levers of power, um, and and you can feel good about that. Mm-hmm. Um, this is that like moralist um, kind of politics. Um, you're trying to um, the politics of virtue, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, like like there won't be bad things that happen if a good guy's in charge of the death machine right. <laughs> and so there are all these kind of um, exogenous shocks to the system right um, in a relative sense um, they're not exogenous to capitalism but um, but basically um, what needs to happen what they decide to do is um, they're going to um, steal labor share, like the social surplus. They're going to steal labor share of the profits um, because, uh, like, you can't deal with this inflation by, like, they're just, they're not, in simple terms, they're not going to boost wages anymore. Um, that's not how we're going to get out of this crisis and all these things. And, and it's maybe not the first time, but Americans are having to deal with, um, like the, the tightening of the belt. And that's kind of what Jimmy Carter embodies to some extent. And I think that's a little bit why like liberals like him to some extent is he was like, you know, put on a sweater and turn the heat down and he put solar panels on the white house. Um, and, you know, it was this idea of, like, um, certainly not minimalism, but but he was like your grandpa or, like, the nice guy um, who was just, it was like putting Mr. Rogers in the White House, who was just like, you know, uh, who was going to implement austerity and deregulation, but he was going to do it with, like, a nice, in a nice way. And um, yeah, he's gonna go with a smile as opposed yeah. to a scowl. So yeah. like you feel like it was your idea. Yeah, well and and that's easy because what happens here is um this greed and this corruption kind of um uh, like democratic voters and well uh, American voters kind of recoil. Um, from this greed and corruption that's been so exposed um, 
prior to Carter, right? So that's yeah. their answer is like, is um, their enlightenment is that like money is the root of all evil, right? So yeah. we're not going to give um, workers money. <laughs> More because it's evil. Right. So we'll just hold on to it for you. Yeah, like the material is corrupt. You know? Yeah. Like it cor- that's that's is is it saying like money corrupts people, you know? So like why would we give people money? Yeah. <laughs> um and you know that's that's the basis of um, how they go forward. Um, and begin to uh, the, his project Jimmy Carter's project as president was to um, essentially um, deregulate um, well he, he he deregulated the trucking industry and airlines um, which then um, Reagan was able to exploit um, and you have a shift from like uh, the Teamsters and 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 real like uh, unionized trucking into this more uh, like individualist trucking, um, and that's where you have the kind of trope of the eighties of this like you know lone gunman trucker like Black Dog or any other like Kurt Russell movie. Uh, <laughs> Big trouble in Little Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just like this individual trucker, lone gunman, just roaming the wilderness, just uh, oh, you know. Make some trouble. Better take care of it. Yeah, hit the right meth out. pipe. Um, we love truckers, but <laughs> um, and that's what creates these tropes, though, mm-hmm. uh, right? Um, so. It's this deregulation uh, project, and also um, it's the kind of um, breaking away from the material interests. Um, labor had its last kind of, uh, it's in its death throes, essentially, in any meaningful way during that point, and it's, uh, it's, it's a militant, um, like it... It hasn't been since, uh, you know, like the 20s, essentially. Um, so, uh, and, and no, but and like no Democrat or Republican wants militant labor. Like even FDR only took advantage of that for like a couple of years before he shut that shit down. Um, because they don't want, like the president's first job basically is to like, um, like order for the productive capacity of, of the nation. Mm-hmm. um f- for capital but um so they don't want that and also it's like it, it, power doesn't really like it when the people who actually have power um exert that mm-hmm. force um but in any case that's carter's program is to kill the last vestiges of the new deal um to put the boot on the neck of the working class and make sure it's never going to be removed. Um, if, if you look at his, I, I, I can't spend this whole episode on Jimmy Carter, but like, if you look at his presidency, you will see that very clearly with, uh, with Volcker being appointed, uh, to the fed, um, and, uh, the Volcker shocks and all these tricks they try to play, um, what ends up happening is, I mean, it even, it affects third world countries even who have, um, you know, like in Latin America who, um, had either like debt or, or their currency was pegged to the dollar. Mm -hmm. So like all of a sudden their debt grows. Um, that's, uh, this is the, um, beginning of this, um, well, this is it, the emergence, the real emergence of the austerity project of, uh, uh, of the austerity program of the neoliberal project in modern America. Um, and that starts under Jimmy Carter. Also, just whatever, um, he was like arming the Mujahideen, um, which, um, you know, had some 
ramifications. <laughs> uh, you know, he was giving arms to, uh, you know, like a Osama bin Laden, essentially. Um, to, you know, the Soviets in Afghanistan. Anyway, whatever. Um, but so this move towards deregulation um, and um, killing these last vestiges of the New Deal, um, that's important to recognize. Um, you can like Jimmy Carter for his personality. Um, I think we all have seen the, like, whatever. Classic him. quotes. They well, whatever. <laughs> like, if you if you quote an American president to me, get over yourself. Get over yourself. And someday we'll talk about FDR and why he was a son of a bitch, and then people will really get upset. But whatever. If you like him for his personality and his tone, fine. Um, but our analysis is um, like how uh, how if you can eat that day <laughs> i don't i don't I, I think if 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 you um are you know a worker and your kids are hungry um i don't like i don't think you give a shit how nice the president is yeah. um like to some extent that almost might be worse in some ways. It's mm -hmm. like, why, are, well, why am I starving under such a person <laughs> nice pretending guy. to be so goddamn nice? Yeah. So that's what it is, though. It's this corruption causes this revulsion, um, and they're able to, whether like actively or passively, um, they're able to essentially say like, you know, no, the material is bad. And, and this is where we see the connection with Joe Biden, okay? What happens to the Democrat Party, essentially, um, is they embrace that, that the material is bad and that um, there's this shift away from um, seeing unions as, um, you know, um, a powerful... Um, you know, like organized labor and something that can really help your campaign and also is like the productive class of your country um, to some extent, the organized productive class of your country um, and why it might be important to like um, listen to them and, and, and see that as like the people. And then they begin to get treated as like big labor, as just another special interest group. It's, it's it's they're just corrupt bastards yeah they just want you want money for your for workers like you're basically just like like opec or something you know you're just another you're a lobby yeah you know which is hilarious in some ways you know you're like the you're the pharmaceutical lobby except you know it's to so jimmy's you know wife can have health care um, so that's where we see this shift away from it. Um, and that's what opens up space for, um, the, uh, the politics of austerity. Because, you know, they say like, you know, like, how dare you ask for things right now? Um, uh, like just, just buckle down and be virtuous. Times are tough. Yeah, and and even vo I mean, like, um, I can find the quote really, but uh, but Volker, um, you know, is basically like the work. You know, workers are going to eat it. Like, um, they're they're not going to get anything out of this. They're going to have to, you know, take a hit. Um, and it's like um, like Andrew Mellon, who essentially said. Um, you know, um, like he, he was saying like, you know, during the great depression, he was saying like, um, like when these crises happen, just liquidate labor, liquidate the banks, liquidate the farmers, liquidate it all. And then when, um, when you've liquidated it all as people, you know, that creates the, um, environment for regrowth essentially so he's like you know like burn the crops um <laughs> except these are people's lives oh my God. um and then you know the soil will be fertile for regrowth 
Um, so this like is a, a sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> Except like um, a sacrifice for a very small uh, percentage of people. And this is what we see um, when there are crises. What happens is we are the ones who have to um, buckle down or to go without. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And 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 um, tighten down and and find you know live without essentially maybe it's healthcare or food housing yeah maybe it's a car maybe it's a house clean yeah. water right yeah okay yeah all of that all of that that's what happens when you when you treat people as, um as just like some greedy interest so this move away from the material. Um, into this like politics of virtue, saying we just need a nice guy. Um, and and Carter, the last thing I'll say about Carter is he has this famous speech, um, which he never says the word malaise, but they called the malaise speech when they're roasting him after um, his presidency, um, where he basically is is like you know like we have to confront this problem um, in America, you know. Um, and um, Reagan comes in <laughs> um, and essentially says, like, we don't have to confront shit. Um, like, he's, he's the Trump of that era. So it's interesting that we see Carter with this Obama-esque um, kind of hollow shiny virtuousness you know mm-hmm. like in the hope and change yeah the hopeful candidate yeah <laughs> the nice guy yeah who's also um like kicking uh labor in the teeth the entire time um and then we see these um you know loud um heavy-handed um deregulating um uh, celebrities yeah fucking evil bastards come in they 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 make room for them that's what happens when you when you put the boot to labor seal and you weaken people um and and you put your focus on morality and and people were so fucked up internally from from thing you know from vietnam and 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 economic crisis and and all these other things that it, it makes room for this and and we see the democrats um, begin to show that they're not going to be a resistance party. This consensus begins to build. Um, you know, they're they're not going to push back. Um, we we definitely that's realized in Clinton for sure. But but Reagan just destroys everything. Um, he just he just burns a path. I mean, between deregulation and financialization. Um, and, and the goddamn Cold War. But hey, at least now we're going to get spa- a space force, finally. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, Reagan, um, instead of saying the Cold War, what I mean is, with Reagan, what we see is him, um, the hi- hyper financialization um, reaching um, the Soviet Union, and we see characters pop up like, oh, I don't know, um, Larry Summers, um, who is apparently um, Biden's economic advisor, which is hilarious because he's just a neoliberal ghoul. Yeah. Um, who is is has a lot of responsibility for say like Vladimir Putin. Um, because of how he helped destroy um, the Soviet Union's economy um, through economic fuckery. That's what these people do. Um, they want to open up markets um, because um, a- a- as the rate of profits decline, what you need to do is you need to expand and you need to exploit. Um, so that's what they did. They expanded and they exploited. Um, and so, um, so yeah, it's interesting these characters, uh, keep popping up, especially as it, um, 
comes to Biden. Uh, the connection with Biden and Carter there is Joe Biden has said the same things about labor. He, he said the exact same things, uh, like big labor. Um, you know, they're, they're a special interest group. Mm. He, 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 that's how he sees it. Um, th this could be the politics of that era. Also, he's like a Republican douchebag, essentially, um, with like a blue jacket. Um, masquerade. And dementia. Yeah, well, actually, it's a, yeah. It's reversible, reversible type. That's reversible. Yeah. It's red on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear an interesting theory. I'm ripping this off a little bit, uh, but I did hear an interesting theory um, that allegedly, 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 and this is just a theory and totally not true, um, but I'm speculating here. But I did hear an interesting theory that um, it, it piqued my interest. So um, the idea of uh, lead, right? Lead contamination. Mm -hmm. And it's um, like um, psychological effects uh, like on the brain and um, how it... Um, The proposal is that violent crime has gone down since lead exposure has been reduced. And there's a case um, for since we took the lead out of gasoline um, and lead exposure went down significantly, um, that that's the reason violent crime um, has fallen uh, or, or fell, you know, uh, in the uh, in the subsequent um, years um, after that, um, so like as it began to clear, and as like you know, like there were less people who had that lead exposure. Mm -hmm. um, now, again, that's just a theory, but how that ties into Joe Biden is, um, uh, and she used to drink lead. well, maybe. <laughs> But how much do you know about the company DuPont? <laughs> hmm. I've never heard of it. You never? Are, are you kidding me? You never heard of DuPont? Um, it's a chemical company. Um, you in your bloodstream. You have DuPont chemicals in your bloodstream. We all do. They're ubiquitous. Right. Yeah, I have no doubt about that. You do. Our chemicals. You do. Um, the the PFAS chemicals are ubiquitous. Everybody has yeah. them in their Everywhere. in their bloodstream. Okay. Dupont is a chemical company. There's some interesting things about the history of Dupont, which maybe I'll get into in a second. Maybe I'll just fucking second half will be a free for all. How about that? <laughs> um, but um, and I'm gonna give you a minute here in a second. But the theory is that um, uh, first of all, like Joe Biden's involvement with Dupont is like. Mm, they love each other. Uh -huh. um, DuPont um, I spent too much time on this because uh, <laughs> I have other things I want to talk about. The, the proposal is that Joe Biden w has led exposure and that's what's, okay. that's what's caused his fucking aggressiveness. That's why he's a fucking pathological liar. He's he's like he's uh, the things people are criticizing him about. He's always been this way. Yeah. He has always been this way. He's never not been like this. It's 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 sadder now. Yeah. But he's always been aggressive. He's always been impulsive and a liar. Well, I that's impulse. Yeah. To a, to a large extent. Um he even the reason he says he lies is because he gets mad, and then he just goes off. He says he lies when he's mad. Um, he said that when he was challenged about his law school record or whatever, and then they went off on that person. They like, I'd love to, to compare my IQ to yours. Do push-ups. Well, that was different. But um, but and then he lied um, about his his, his law IQ. school performance. Mm -hmm. um, in any case, um, so that's the interesting theory. We can get into that sometime. Um, I, I'd like to do that in the connection between him and Dupont, which is like 
Mmm. Gross. And DuPont also is terrible. Um, so, fuck them. But, yeah, that's... Uh, wouldn't it be interesting? Um, we'll explain some stuff. Yeah. Um, it would. And sounds like a movie. This, this sounds like the makings of a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. can play uh, Joe Biden. Just be super mean. It'd be. It's like it's like Clint Eastwood in every any goddamn movie he's ever played, except not cool and very sad. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like mean and fucking handsy. Yeah. And 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 makes space for fascists at every point. He's literally like. He uh, wants to. No, I'm going to get distracted by this. I'm going to get distracted yeah. by this. But literally, he's been on the wrong side of every single thing. Any, Every bad thing that you fucking hate about the American government in the past 40 years, let's say, he's ha- he's been on the... He if was he on the wrong side of that If he hasn't vote. had a direct fucking hand in, he's been on the exact wrong side of it. Mm-hmm. So, fucking sit with that for a minute. Um, so, anyway... We see this movement away from the material. The working class can suck a dick. They're not going to get anything. You're just a fucking lobby group. Um, and we need to be virtuous. And we need to... It's like when the Pope fucking starts saying, like, money is the root of all evil. <laughs> and it's from a fucking palace of yeah. gold. Right? It's like, well, why don't you yeah. give away... Some, like, the Pope... <laughs> is it really going to get distracted? The Pope, <laughs> um, what, like a month ago, was... Uh, on a like a, a live stream arguing for a UBI. Yeah, I remember that. Bro, give away your money. <laughs> you have so much money. <laughs> like, like you got like a tax. Give it to country, people. Dude. Yeah, you, you have a t- palace of gold in a tax free country from uh, Mussolini for denying the Holocaust. Like, not you, but also you have connections to fascists or whatever. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like uh, the the nation's premier pedophile ring um, arguing for a UBI. Also, uh, Richard Nixon argued for uh, a UBI. There's no connection there. It's just <laughs> the thing. Um, but that was part of the rising the- uh, theories around austerity. I mean, you see Milton Friedman and, and um, the monetarism, right? Um that was his, you know, like, brainchild. Um, they want to use UBI um, to gut the welfare state, mm-hmm. to kill, um, like, social welfare. So you wouldn't have, you know, disability. Which is exactly what Yang wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll never know to some extent. Um, but yeah, he did quote Milton Friedman, um, and 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 certainly that's what he wanted, um, and and it would have been implemented in that way. I mean, you're not yeah. you're not incorrect. It's just like he never got that far. Yeah. <laughs> like he's uh, dumb. Yeah, I do. While we're talking about Andrew Yang for a second, can we just like appreciate for a second that like during an era where gun control is, like, one of the most important things to uh, liberal voters, his answer to it was, like, smart guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, he, he went Judge Dredd, man. He went full-out Judge Dredd. He was like, we will put fingerprint scanners on the on every gun <laughs> so you can't shoot. For, like, okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm definitely spending time on this. Fuck it. <laughs> We'll put fingerprint scanners on the guns so, um, so like you can only shoot your gun. How does that do it's anything? It's not gonna First stop all, murders if you're like, murdering like, people with your own gun. There's where it's going to uh blow up somebody's hand if you use your gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna C4 charge in there. Or it shoots you. I, yeah. I don't know. See, the argument would be like, okay, well, then your kid couldn't shoot themselves because you didn't lock up your gun. A, there's definitely an easier answer. And B, he was even pressed on this, I believe. And they're like, yeah, uh, that technology doesn't exist. (laughs) So, like, (laughs) what? And he was like, oh, we'll figure it out. 
you know. Like, we'll, come, we'll circle back I to that. I disagree. I, I love what a shitty candidate he was. Um, and yet people... Just objectively, what a terrible candidate. And he gets so much love. Yeah. Even from, like, proclaimed leftists. He had no... He was talking about how, like, Marx didn't anticipate technology, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hmm. Would you say he was Sarah Palin in this uh, oh, this election? Sarah Palin in what election? Oh, is he the Sarah Palin of this election? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know. She's like a case to herself. I don't know. <laughs> I he's just he's just bad. Yeah. She's bad, but in, like, a fucking scary way. He's bad in a funny way. She's uh, bad in, like, a purposeful yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Um, who would be the Sarah Palin of this election cycle? Um, <laughs> may, like, maybe Kamala Harris. Because she was a goddamn cop. Yeah. Like. For real. Like, if she ends up vice president, which definitely won't happen. Um. Because he's definitely going to make, like, George W. Bush vice president. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> While these liberal... Uh, dude, like, he could... Joe Biden could name George W. Bush president, and that might be the thing that wins him the election. Because, first of all, um, conservatives would goddamn love that. And secondly, like, George Bush would be the only one who wouldn't want to do it. Because he likes the idea that people don't remember that he is he the was. most evil person he, in modern history. Yeah. Um, and and liberals would love it because they would be like, well, he's better than Trump and whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and they've completely, you know, they've gone into like rehabbing him. And while being like, I'm not saying he's a good person. Well, that's why there's been all these posts like, oh, I miss George Bush. Fuck like, that. He, he wasn't even a legitimate president. You couldn't bury him deep enough. <laughs> you couldn't... If you were protesting the Iraq War, um, like I was as a teenager, and now you, you're out there um, talking about how, like, uh, you know, uh, like, George, you know, like, George Bush would be better than Trump. You are fucking stupid, and you have no right to talk to anybody about anything. Yeah. Um. You you can vote still, but man, like, like, do you have bad judgment? <laughs> That's the nicest thing I can say. You have bad judgment, and you should shut the fuck up. <laughs> and like all this liberal punditry, that's what they're trying to do. Because they're trying to make abstract value judgments about like about Donald Trump versus whoever. Mm -hmm. Because that's how you influence a false dichotomy. Yeah. And so you say, well, you know. Because it's... They don't care about the, like, effects. Like, concentration camps are still fucking open during a pandemic. We're still running them. And there's not enough divergence. There's not enough difference ideologically between uh, at least a Democrat politician and a, and a Republican politician. Yeah. Uh, take the border, for example. Donald Trump, you know, build that wall, right? Yeah. And, and we're going to see as the ecological crisis increases um, that liberals begin to start saying, like, yeah, like, build that wall. The, the difference is, and, and Democrat politicians want a wall. They just want a smart wall, which in a lot of respects would be worse. Um, they want like drones and, and like um, cameras and, and this like, um, you know, like techno fascism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they want that sort of thing. Um, so okay, well, the same kind of yeah. Yeah. So the same effects. But you get to but you get to like act like it's not. Yeah, you act like it's better somehow. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 the same thing. Well, it's different in some respects, but in the same vein of like 
um, somebody who doesn't want to abolish prison necessarily, or whose answer to like um, to um, uh, mass incarceration and and the kind of illegitimate criminal justice system is to like put ankle monitors on everybody. You know, if if you're accused of a crime and blah blah blah, it's like, oh well, we can get rid of bail, um, but we'll just put ankle monitors on everybody. Mm-hmm. So, uh, private companies, you know, monitoring people, um, which by the for way, a cost, like, you have yeah, to pay for that. Yeah, you have to pay mm-hmm. for it. So that's their answer to it, which is terrible. You know, that was the thing in that I I don't remember if she kind of um, got into how bad it would be. Because uh, honestly, it's been a while since I watched it. But that was the thing in that Ava DuVernay documentary about mass incarceration was fucking uh, Newt Gingrich, of all people, um, being like, yeah, mass incarceration is terrible. You know what we should do is strap a fucking ankle monitor on all these motherfuckers. Um, which is not a liberatory answer. It just shifts the problem. Yeah. Um, in any case, so there's not enough difference in these things. Um, and, and we begin to see that realized. And, and, um, and I will get into why that's a problem, uh, given the current circumstances, uh, in a minute. Uh, we will be right back.
I've been muted for a while. Damn it. Cool. <laughs> I don't even know how long we were muted. Oh, yeah, a couple of minutes. Okay. Anyway, cool. <laughs> yeah. If you're watching us, apologies. Because you missed out on something. Yeah. And you're probably laughing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, let me recap what I was babbling about in silence, I guess. <sighs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> How's the unhoused, goddammit? It's not that complicated. Um, that human life matters more than any amount of profit. Profit's an abstract, and it's 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 meaningless, and it's just recaptured. Um, um, you know, it's stolen labor, yeah. essentially. It's it's stolen time. If you want to think about it, it's it's life stolen from somebody. Um, so it, it doesn't matter except for its function. And if its function is, uh, the importance of it is greater than human life in, in any quantity, um, then it's illegitimate. Yeah. And I don't give a shit about it. And I, I think we all agree. And the unfortunate thing is that it's hard to... Um, for some people at least, to uh, make a commitment to things like that because we live already precarious lives. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to stick out your neck for someone in a real way. But people will. And I have faith in that. Not even faith. I, I know it for a fact. Yeah. I know it for a fact. We wouldn't be here if not for that. If not for people standing up for other people. Now, okay, there are distorted forms of that and whatever. And I'm certainly not trying to be like you know, some sort of positivist and be like, everything is sunshine and fucking rainbows. It's terrible. It's fucking awful. But the only thing that mitigates the awfulness is that. Is people trying like hell. The unfortunate part is that too often we put our efforts in the wrong place. Into short-term solutions or non-solutions. Or meaningless reforms. Mm -hmm. Or into things Real that compromises. actually... compromises. Yeah, or things that exacerbate the problem because they either exacerbate the problem by pushing it off somewhere else or they reproduce that exploitative system like calling the cops on a homeless person that's crazy give them a fucking house <laughs> if you can't do that leave them alone at least so yeah anyway I, I will have to roast Robert Reich another night. Because <laughs> I doubt everyone wants to stay up till 11 to hear me shit on him. <laughs> that'll be fun. Um, Robert, if you want to come on the show, bro. We'd love to have you. Yeah, reach out, man. Reach out. Yeah. I, 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 I will grant you the platform to debate me. <laughs> um, and I don't have any problems with you personally. I'm not making moral judgments about any of these people. Um, but yeah, you, uh, your analysis is flawed. And I would love your platform. Why don't? How about this? You come on the show, and we can talk about movies, and then I'll take your platform and can talk about um, actual liberatory solutions. <laughs> People are going to be like, that's a douchey thing to say. You're goddamn right. He's a douchebag. That's the only proper response. <laughs> Stop right. fawning over this fucking guy. He had so much opportunity mm. to affect change, and he fucking didn't. And now he's grifting you into legitimizing a system that exploits you at every fucking turn. Anyway. <laughs> See, you know, like uh, trying to get into it. <laughs> yeah. Stop fawning over these fucking people. Mm. Man. Because they are grifting you hard. And may, he might not even know that he, he... I'm not saying it's an active thing he chooses to do. But he's fucking wrong. And 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 he gives us oversimplified like moral value judgment of things. And that is so the wrong way to approach this. Because mm. it's not going to lead to the... To even a truly liberatory solution. Anyway. If we're just going to reinforce this exploitative system, 
Like, that was a failing of, uh, you know, the New Deal. Because it wasn't liberatory. It was short-term solutions. And then the middle class was able to get what they wanted as they became emerging, Mm -hmm. despite redlining and all these other things, right? And these things that people of color were held back from. And, and, um, you know, you you had an emerging middle class, and they abandoned the working class to be exploited by um, the the neoliberal hell world. So, you know, all these PMC people that are like the Democratic voters um, that are going for like Warren and will vote for Biden and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm not making moral value judgments. I'm just saying these are the people that want virtue politics and, and there are actual material... Um, there's a material argument there's a material basis for people um both who voted for trump even though they're wrong (laughs) Um, and that's a bad um it's not a great way but also it's hard to contrast that with someone like joe biden who you're not going to get material benefits there so what the fuck do they care that's what's hilarious about his pitch about being like i'm gonna get moderate republicans how you got outflank Trump on the right? Nobody's buying Good that line. bullshit. Nah. So he might win. That's this is how I'm gonna close it. Joe Biden might win. I'm way more I could expand on, but I got so distracted. <laughs> um, but Joe Biden could win. And it will suck. It will be very, 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 very bad. And this austerity program is coming. And and it will look like um a return and an end to this facade of caring about human life. They're not going to even pretend anymore. That's what we've seen. And, and it will be a an exacerbation either way. You're going to see an exacerbation of this rise of um, far right nationalism. A hundred percent. That's what's coming out of this crisis here in America. And, and and for Joe Biden to have these fucking ads um, making about China, he has shown that he has no alternative to Trump. He's not offering solutions. Yeah. He's not saying, here's how we recover. He's saying, no, um, yes, China is to blame, and I'm going to be the guy who's really going to spank him on the ass for it. And that's fucking scary. And that's why he's yeah. no fucking different. It's true. And and probably why he's going to fucking lose. Because there's no, there's no alternative here. There's no exit. We're just... We are flying towards a goddamn brick wall. So, engage in mutual aid. Organize. Educate yourself. Do some readings. Maybe we should put up a reading list on the blog. Um, that would be good. Um, and um, agitate. Agitate the fuck out of this system. Be brave. House the unhoused. Feed the unfed. Um, whatever. Shoot the children. Anyway. Part. I never know what direction. <laughs> I always, it's the mirror image. Always. Parker, last words? Um, yeah. Uh. Things are going to be fucking weird. <laughs> but like you said, you know, got a little bit of faith in humanity. Um, you know, people will come out and people are working to try and stem the tide. So. Right. We can't afford to be like doom pilled. We can't be doomers. We can't just sit back and watch it all burn. Well, sometimes you run out of your prescription of Duma to <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. Stop taking it. It's bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, you got anything you want to add? Um, I mean, just one thing you had said before made me think of when you said, um, you know, like, they're not even going to pretend to care anymore. It made me think of that tweet you showed me the other day about how, like, you know, I don't know at this point what it is, probably like 80,000, if not more, people have died. And 
that we know about. There's no, like, mourning of this going on. You know, like, there's no real acknowledgement of these people in the media or anywhere. And, like, that's not good. (laughs) That is not a good sign. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have no agency to do that because how could you possibly process what's going on right now? Yeah. You've been socialized entirely to compartmentalize this and push it away. Um, it's, it's easy not to uh, mourn a number. Well, yeah, yeah, that's part of it for sure. Make it out today. It's a fucking number. That's part of it for sure. But also, like, um, like, how could you what's your basis for even beginning to process this right you're being told to go back to work yeah and there's not even real acknowledgement of what's going on here of the danger you're still in yeah i mean joe Biden ain't doing that even bernie sanders isn't truly helping with that nobody no leadership is and no cultural leadership is they're doing these fucking stupid zoom videos being like we're all in this together there needs we're to be acknowledgement songs from our yachts yeah there needs to be acknowledgement that we're not in this together yeah okay that's how you start but that's not coming and 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 we're all expected to get back to work yeah so yeah so no i don't blame anyone for not processing this because it will be weaponized. Maybe that's the plan. But but we don't have the capacity to right now. And that's something we should be helping each other do. So if there's nothing else you do, like fucking support someone. Reach out to them. Be like, how you doing? Talk about this shit. Don't hide it. Don't fucking mask it. Feel it. It's scary. I have fucking panic attacks about it. My breathing sucks permanently now. Cool. Awesome. I call Parker and I feel... You're over there. <laughs> <laughs> I call Parker and I feel better about it. And it's okay to, like, stop thinking about it as well. Fucking play video games for a second. Or or do some do something else. But, yeah fucking yeah yeah it's it, yeah no you're right to bring it up because it's worrisome i don't know if i don't know if we can we can process it hopefully we can anyway um yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck you fuck anyway cool <laughs> keep fighting uh stay safe and uh yeah we love you bye Very good. bye <laughs>